Age of Empires 4 just launched their new update 8324 and with it the meta has shifted pretty wildly. In this video here today we're going to go through some of the balance and bugs fixes of all of the civilizations as well as the um, individual civilizations and talk a little bit about how this is going to drastically shift the way that competitive games are going to start playing in Age of Empires 4 especially if you are a Delhi Sultanate main that is uh it is not a happy day for you but in my typical fashion of upfronting knowledge as best i can in my videos to give you kind of a brief overview of what's really happened with this update uh delhi sultanate got a very significant nerf in that their um technology ramp has been kind of uh, changed from age to age it's on a different modifier than it used to be where it's just 5x now it's different from ev each and every age and on top of it they lose sanctity in the dark age which allowed you to do any kind of dark age rush onto sacred sites and capture them to give you a little bit of an edge up that is no longer present in the dark age for the Delhi sultanate it's now in the feudal age so that is a really huge nerf in addition to the honed blades uh, technology, which used to give one additional attack to men at arms, no longer does that. So all these things in conjunction have really made the Delhi Sultanate fall pretty far down in the tier bracket here. Um, but in addition to all of that, um, and I've said in addition now 40 times already, and we're only uh, a minute and a half into the video, um, we see that the French have gotten a little bit of a nerf indirectly and directly right there the french hulk has had its armor reduced but also when it comes to playing with any kind of heavy cav now you're going to notice that spearmen are going to do more damage to you crossbowmen are going to do more damage to heavy armor and spearmen will now auto brace if they are told to do an attack move and get charged by cavalry so that is a lot to deal with but we also noticed that China has gotten a huge buff onto their units that have been reduced in cost for the repeater crossbows and their officials can now buff up blacksmiths and universities research time by 200%. So all these things are really an awesome shift to some parts of the meta. Again, like I said, the Delhi Sultanate is pretty unfortunate in that it got cut down so hard. And if you were looking to get a Springald nerf in this patch, it did not happen. In fact, Springalds were not touched, but Mangonels were buffed, kind of. They have a kind of a linear buff, and we'll talk about it once we get to it. So that's kind of down and dirty of these patch notes. We are not going to go through the entirety of these patch notes. I'm barely even going to talk about the features. We're pretty much just going to go through balance and bug fixes, talking about some of the things that were buffed and some of the things that were nerfed, and just kind of go from there. So if that's all you wanted to know, please, by all means, feel free to shut the video down. But if you do want to find out a little bit more about the nitty gritty of this update, stick around and we're going to jump into both of those, like I said, the balance and the bug fixes for all the civilizations and then each individual civilization as we see it. And if this is your first time to watching the patch notes videos that I do, the way I do this is that you'll notice that the, the text will be colored either green, red, or cyan. If it is green, it's a buff. It's a red, it's a um, nerf. And if it's cyan, it's something that's either neutral or or it's like something I just wanted to highlight and talk about because I thought it would be worth it. So that's the way we'll be doing things as we move into these patch notes. But if you are heading out, please don't forget to comment, like, and or subscribe. I can't tell you how much that does help me and the channel. It is stupid how much YouTube puts a, a weight into that. But for those that do want to stick around, let's get started here on the Age of Empires 4 update 8324 and how it is going to drastically shift the meta for AoE 4. So let me start off uh, in the actual expansion of this by saying outright, there is a huge issue with the Abbasids. Right now, as of the creation of this video, there is a bug that makes it so that the Abbasid Spearman range is like, I don't know, like 96 or something stupid high. So they can pretty much stab you from like, a whole screen away more or less it's it's stupid ridiculous so obviously it's very broken right now and there are a number of other pretty bad bugs present in this update that hopefully relic will give us a hot fix in the next day or two because like i said if you choose abbasids you just kind of auto win in the early age by just rushing with spearmen and no one can can you can outrange almost 
um, just your base archer by just stabbing the air and killing things. So that is worth noting right up front that there are some issues because even though the Abbasid's got a lot of really awesome uh, changes and fixes, um, they also broke them. So let's jump into the rest of this. Just wanted to make that uh, transparent and clear up front. So we did get a number of changes, or I'm sorry, um, feature additions here, mainly stuff to the post-match and editing, uh, editing, that's not even a word, and adding in things to uh, the mini-map and Chinese Dynasty buttons, so on and so forth. But the balance update is what I really want to go into here. So for the core units, all spearmen have had their damage increased versus cavalry, as you can see, from 3x to 3.5x. So rank 1 spearmen, instead of doing 12, now do 15, and then rank 2, now do 20, 23, 28, respectively. That is a ton of damage coming out of these spearmen. And in addition to this, and we'll, we'll get into it, it is a patch note later, but they will now auto brace when charged by cav. So if you do a attack move with your spearmen and they get charged by cav, they will stop and drop their spear. That's so good. So what would have been kind of micro intensive before and require the player to have a sub a certain skill set to note and notice when a charge is coming and then brace things so that they actually can drop their spear and negate that charge. The game's just going to do for you now. So that makes them extremely deadly to any kind of early night play from both the Rus and the um, French. Don't even get me started here on the horsemen for the Mongols because let's take a look at the uh, nerf in just a little bit for them. But crossbowmen also are going to do more damage, having that increase from 6 to 9 and 8 to 11 respectively for their base and elite counterparts. But then horsemen, like I was saying, they got a buff to their ranged armor from 0 to 1. Now, horsemen do get a bonus when fighting against range. It's kind of their thing, right? They're the antithesis of range. They get a nice chunky bonus. But... They got this nice, cool ranged armor increase, which reduces... Now, let's kind of put this into consideration here. If I were to shoot you, uh, a horseman, with my bow and arrow, and it did 10 damage, it now does 9. That's how ranged armor works. But they've also reduced the health of every single horseman unit. And that's brutal. Take a look at this. So early horsemen have gone here from 125 to 100, 155 to 125, 190 to 155, and then 225 to 180. That is, like I said, a brutal, brutal reduction. I, I think just simply giving them the ranged armor increase would have been fine if they really wanted to reduce the health. Not so drastic. That is such a huge amount that it makes their kind of late game playability extremely low. The only time that you're really going to want to use them now, I'd say, is the early portion of a Mongol rush. But even then, now the spearmen that you can pump out to counter an early Dark Age Mongol rush can really kind of counter against them so much better now. So it's it's really a hard spot now for the horsemen, which I've seen so much in the competitive play, way more than I thought I would. And now getting this huge nerf to their health makes them really gonna really hard to kind of stay in there because one of the other big things you'd use horsemen for is to really rush the back line and destroy spring alls. but with such low health it's really going to be hard for them to do that so an interesting nerf to see there from relic hand cannon and cannon damage reduced from 42 to 35 a pretty significant nerf there as well and then battering rams have had a little bit of a retooling with their overall stats so their movement speed has been reduced from 3.5 to 3 tiles and battering ram health has been reduced from 200 to i'm sorry from 900 to 700 which is by 200 which is what i meant to say but their cost reduced their pop cost reduced is or redu their pop cost has been reduced from three to one and their ranged armor has been increased from 15 to 30. so you can see where that health reduction kind of uh, is counteracted by the doubling their ranged armor which is quite nice now mangonels get a pretty interesting little buff here so their reload time is reduced from 8.75 to 6.75 and their area of effect shape damage or change has been changed from 180 to 360 degrees. So this obviously means that they're going to be shooting at a faster rate and they're going to do more damage if you have them target the center of a unit. The adverse effect of that, though, is that you will now have to get your mangonels into closer combat to have that kick off. So you typically would want your mangonel to shoot into the center of just say uh, English longbowmen, not on the flanks or just have an attack move where it would just attack the front rank. 
you ideally want to hit that center mass because it does the most damage to the unit. So you're going to be able to get maybe one or two more shots out before they get popped by, say, a spring alt or just some massive uh, torches or fire, whatever it is. So this is a bit of a buff, and I didn't really think the Manganel really needed a buff to begin with, to be totally honest. I really would have rather have seen a spring alt nerf right now or right here. But it is worth noting that there is kind of a double-edged sword to this buff, and it can actually be uh, pretty devastating if you're not careful about how you attack with mangonels. Rebalquin though has had fire armor increased from 0 to 10 which is nice but it's had its range armor reduced from 2 to 0. Moving into naval units the fishing boat wood cost was increased from 60 to 75. Don't know why that's in green. Guess what it should be in red so we'll make that actually a red one. And then the aeroship bonus damage versus incendiary class is increased from 0 to 2x So that one's supposed to be in green. Moving into core buildings and upgrades, we get the outpost arrow system placement now also increases garrison arrow weapon range from 6 to 8, which is also was very nice. Elite army tactics increases health and damage by 10 from 10 to 20, and then all units elite rank tech now takes only 60 seconds rather than a minute and a half, which is quite nice. But now we get into the Civ specific balance changes, and these are pretty nice here. So with the Abbasids, uh Phalanx technology, I'm sorry, this is not balance, is it? Oh, this is balance updates. I thought this was the bug fixes portion. So Abbas is just kind of have some stuff moved around from locations. Nothing too crazy here. But with China, we get a lot. So the official's tax collection ability cooldown reduced from 30 to 15 seconds. That doubles the amount of money that you can get from all of your officials when you have all four pumping out. That is huge. I think it was 320 or 360 uh, across having all four. Now that means, what, 640 or 720, depending on uh, whichever one it was, if I can remember off the top of my head. So that's a large amount of gold income increase for the Chinese. Now, with the repeater crossbows, their food cost was reduced by 40. So now it's only 20 food to get these guys out, which is a substantial reduction here. In addition, though, with that, they do get a nerf to their um, health dropping from 90 to 70 and then 110 to 80 in their veteran and then 130 to 95 in their elite counterparts. So it is a little bit of a balance there, but they also come out much faster from 22 to 15 seconds on their training time. And then also with the nest of bees, remember the nest of bees is the mangonel for the Chinese. Uh, the nest of bees removement speed has been increased from 2.5 to 3.75. That's huge, but their minimum range has been increased from 2.5 to 3, so meaning that, of course, within three tiles, they cannot hit something rather than 2.5. And the nest of bees health has been reduced from 240 to 200, which can, of course, be offset by the uh, clock tower. So just kind of be mindful of that. Their training time has been reduced by 5 seconds, and their damage was increased by 10 or by 2 to 10 because they do uh, burst damage with their rocket. So definitely, definitely worth noting on that. Then power technics technology move. They did a lot of technology shifting around for everything. And that's actually kind of nice because the way that Age of Empires organizes its technology for the most part has typically been by uh, the technology that applies to the unit is directly below the unit. And if it's according to a specific age, it'll usually be in sequence. That has been fixed on a lot of buildings like the naval buildings or uh, the barracks of, of respective units have had their bonuses now applied directly below them as it, as it should be. So you'll see a lot of that in the patch notes. That's why it's there. For the Delhi Sultanate, though, they have gotten that nerf bat hard here. So the Sanctity technology we're talking about, its age requirement was increased from the Dark Age to the Feudal Age. It used to be you start the game and you immediately make that Sanctity tech. It is no longer that way, unfortunately. And then the Scholar Research System has been adjusted to correlate with the Civ's viable opportunities to produce scholars. Early tech research times have been reduced, later ones increased. So everything used to be at 5x. Now it goes... In an in a increasing scale of dark, feudal, and castle to imperial of 3, 3.5, 5, and then 15x. So obviously, imperial age, you're going to be just pushing out those texts. But unfortunately, those early ages are really going to be rough for you. And that's kind of the big thing with the Delhi Sultanate was, okay, you can, you're not going to, it's not going to cost you to make those texts, but 
you can just start doing them for right now immediately and it's going to it's going to take some time you just start getting your uh, research system your scholar research system on board or online and it buffs up all of your research that's not the case anymore it's going to take you progressing through the ages to get that the scholar research system to really get return on you so unfortunately daily social media has gotten a pretty brutal nerf here and it's something i really didn't think it needed but and we're not even done with the nerfs. Like I said, the honed blade ones is another huge one. So we'll get to that more in the bug fixes, which I think the balance of bug fixes portion maybe should have put been put together, but just separated within each individual civilization. So here's Delhi Sultanate, uh, balance and then bug. That way I know all of it in one area for the Delhi Sultanate rather than having to jump between balance and bug fixes. But I mean, I don't make a game, so what do I know? So moving into the English, we get the Longbowman setup camp ability and will now deactivate if the Longbowman enter combat, whereas before you could just drop it down and then walk away and you'd still be able to get the bonus or the, the uh, health regeneration from it. So this might actually be probably a proper red nerf because you could reliably do this, move around where you set up the camp and still generate the health. Now it just completely deactivates. So uh, that probably should be red to be totally honest. French, of course, reduced armor of French Hulk from six to two. That is not too fun because the thing here is that the French get access to the Hulk in the second age. The English and the HRE get access to a Hulk in the third age. So the French Hulk will now suffer from four less armor. And I haven't looked or tested this to see if it applies some sort of buff when it jumps up to the, the next age or something. But that will mean that the French Hulk will always be behind the English and the HRE Hulk. The only advantage is that they'll be able to get it out in the second age. So it is worth noting that the French got a pretty massive nerf there. Holy Roman Empire got a nerf to its emergency repair, reducing or increasing its time or cooldown time from 45 to 60 seconds. This is a nice nerf in my opinion. Uh, the HRE were able to pretty much just auto repair away emergency repair away the majority of siege damage if it wasn't focused fire so it's nice to see this kind of kind of i'd say be brought in line to the way that this is probably supposed to be used um but hre also got some buffs in the bug fixes area so we'll go there we'll go over that in a little bit mongols overall i'd say got a little bit of a nerf here their landmarks are now able to pack and unpack while at max pop uh, apparently there was a bug that would prevent that from happening, but the raid bounties and food gold plunder have been reduced from 100 to 75 and 125 to 100 on the improved variation of. And the Khan's attack speed arrow ability no longer affects siege class units, so you can't use it to have your mangonels, or I'm sorry, your oh yeah, mangonels or springholds get a uh, burst of movement to either escape damage or get in close for the, uh, the kill there. For the Rus, the Boyar's Fortitude Tech has moved the Lodia uh, ships that activate a roll switch will now incur a 50% movement speed penalty until the switch is complete between you and me even though I've made a video on how to play the roost I didn't even know you could move them after you <laughs> had activated a roll switch so the joke's on me but the Lodia fishing boat roll switch now or a uh, roll switch costs increase by 25 per roll so that is a little bit of a nerf. I just figured I'd put it in red for whatever reason. Now, map-specific changes. We're not going to go through all of them, just some of the bigger ones. For Ancient Spire, Sacred Spawns have been updated. Ancient Spires now spawn two sacred sites along the central east-west axis. The sites are set to spawn one half map width apart along the central line. Um, what I've noticed with a lot of these map updates is that it has become a little bit more of a reliable set of placement of either resources sacred sites or and this one's a big one trade posts because some maps have it so that your trade posts just don't spawn properly on both sides of the map whatever it is and we'll get to that in a little bit so that's there for the ancient spires black forest is gotten a, a pretty big one here so rebalance the, the number of fish in the starting lakes so that's identical across the map five shore three deep which is really nice we adjusted the trade the trade post spawn location for multi-team uh games so this is cool because it makes it so there's a nice spread of um, trade post spawns, but this is the big one. We remove the sacred sites and replace them with large gold deposits. So if you're the Delhi Sultanate, you would just never play the Black Forest. If that came up in your spawn thing, you just, all right, I'm not playing Black Forest because the big thing I would want to go for is my sacred sites, which I was already nerfed. Now I just can't even take advantage of it on a Black Forest map. So. That's a pretty interesting move to just completely remove the sacred sites and replace them with large gold deposits. 
Um, I know that actually, we're, we're going to go red on that. I, I, I don't like it. It's not, I'm not a fan of it. Um, and the only, you'd have to do, you know, enabling only sacred site victory on this map will now behave as if all victory conditions are turned off and the match will end with annihilation. So you can't even get a sacred site victory on Black Forest, which is a very interesting change there. Um, some other ones here uh, in the Danube River. We have done an overhaul of this map layout to have much more consistent and balanced generation parameters. The new Danube River features a U-shaped river that spawns with stealth forests, one of the sacred sites, and a trade post, making it an important area to contest. The second sacred site will spawn atop a cliff on the west side of the map. So a much different layout because apparently the way it would be working before is one player would spawn maybe in a smaller portion of the map divided by the river, and it would make it so that you just had less resources, a smaller overall footprint to expand into, um, a bunch of stuff. So Curious to see how this plays out in some competitive play. Hill and Dale here is a nice one because the trade posts now spawn along the map edge exactly opposite one another. I've played Hill and Dale where they don't do that. It's just two on one side of the map. So if you are playing, say, the Mongols, which you rely on a really strong trade economy and you have a really far away trade post, which is nice, you know, you do get the advantage. But if they're both on your opponent's side and close to them, that's pretty brutal. Number of central large resource deposits have been slightly reduced. Approximately two per map uh, size were removed. And then I think, oh, Mongolian Heights, we increased the number and improved distribution of river fish, which is quite nice. But moving into bug fixes, we get some nice general ones here. Let's go through those. You can no longer cancel unbuilt stone wall intersections to refund for additional rocks. Rus civilization can no longer produce infinite relics. There is a, a hidden bug fix for the Rus we'll get into when we jump into the individual uh, civilization bug fixes. Some fixes have been made to hardest AI difficulties, such as response to scout attacks. And Spearman will now brace while attack moving against charging cav. That is so huge. I've made it like, I've made the point like four times already. That is just kind of making it so that you can have your Spearman now just attack move. And if they go to, if cav responds and charges at you, you will automatically brace. That is really, really strong. Because remember, bracing enables it so that if cav charge in, they do not get their lance charge. If it's the heavy cav, right? If, if, it's, if it's knights. Uh, horsemen, of course, don't have that. So if it's knights, they do not get their lance charge. And in addition to that, you will immediately do a, a stab of damage back to them. They don't get that charge. So that is a pretty brutal change right there. Warships now correctly fire with all cannons while attack moving or acquiring targets while idle. And warship cannons will now correctly damage ships when shooting directly at their front. Um, it's worth noting that warships take more damage depending on where you shoot them, uh, as opposed to like their aft, the stern, so on and so forth. So it's just kind of worth noting that, but it's not even a patch, it's just something I wanted to say. Crossbowmen no longer gain plus one range after gaining the incendiary arrows tech. I put it in red, but it probably should be in cyan because it's just kind of bringing things in line. It's not necessarily a, an intended nerf. Land traders are now correctly treated as calves, and that's going to help out some factions that get bonuses to calves, like, you know, Mongolians. Landmarks, which act as town centers, now have the textiles technology available. I've never, personally never used textiles, but it's there now if you want to use it. If you're playing, say, as the English, that have a landmark that is a town center or the HRE as well. Now, here's where things get spicy. The Civ specific bug fixes, and for the Abbasids, it is amazing. It is a really strong one, and we're going to see how this plays out with the meta. It's unfortunately hard to test right now because of the Abbasid um, bug that makes they have unlimited range on their spearmen. You just got to not be a shitlord and don't use the bug. You know, if it happens, just you can trigger it, and I don't know how to trigger it, and I'm not even going to say how to trigger it because then maybe someone's going to do it. So don't trigger the bug, and the Abbasids will be fine. But the camel barding now correctly provides armor to camels. That is massive. Trade ships now correctly generate bonus resources. Again, huge. The Tier 3 Golden Age now correctly reduces the production time of all units and not just the first tier of each unit type. Elite Army Tactics and Boot Camp upgrades will now correctly stack with one another. And Camel Unit Base Armor has been properly applied. All of those things are so massive because it now makes it so that Camels can be viable in certain matchups before you could get all these bonuses and it would never matter because it didn't actually apply to the unit now it it properly does 
with some things down here. Armored Caravans no longer provides Siege Armor and correctly provides Ranged Armor instead. I don't know why I really put it in red. Again, these are bug fixes. These aren't balance changes, but still. Boot Camp upgrade no longer increases the attack speed of Archers. I guess it's my point of saying, make sure you know this if you were relying on it before. It was a bug. It is now fixed. Improved processing no longer provides a 100% bonus to stone collection. So Abbasids as a whole, I think, really, really came out on top with this patch. Um, I think that both the balance and the bug fixes helped them out quite a bit. Moving into the Chinese here, officials can now supervise keeps, universities, and blacksmiths as intended. And the Zhugnu now has its wood cost reduced when trained from a building within the aura of the Spirit of the Way. So very nice to see here. Again, China, I think, came out really on top with both these balance and these bug fixes. I expect to see them climbing in that tier bracket of the meta. Delhi Sultanate here. Eh. <laughs> uh, you get to go red. Ugh. The keep emplacements took longer for the Delhi Sultanate. We fixed this bug, so they now take the same time as other civilizations, which is nice. Honed Blades Tech no longer adds an extra one damage to man at arms. So I didn't even know that that was a bug. I thought that that was intended. So it's unfortunate that that is the way that that is, right? I, I put it in red because, like I've said before, if you were relying on this bug to get a little more punching power out of your man at arms, that's no longer the case. And I've already said that in my Delhi Sultanate video that Honed Blades is what gives them really nice men at arms. It's unfortunate that it's no longer the case. Tower Elephants now gain the Armor Visual Upgrade when researching Siege Elephant Tech instead of Armored Beasts. So it's just kind of, I put this in cyan because it's cool because it's just a visual change and it's cool to see that that is uh, present. For the English, fixed a bug where English Network of Castles wasn't applying its full bonus to some units. Overall, I think England didn't really get hit that hard. I don't think that they were in a super dominant position by any broken mechanic. Um, the the Longbowman's ability to just be mass produced and just kind of outpunch their class is really fun and cool. But I think overall, the ability to automatically deactivate their war camp or their camp ability or um, the health regen ability, I think is probably a good balance change because it makes it so that it isn't so broken. But at the same time, I think England kind of comes out pretty okay from this from this patch here. We'll put that in green. For the French, uh, the range of the French Royal Rebalquin has been reduced to match the standard version of the unit. It is unfortunate. I didn't even realize that it was increased here in the coming out of the the um, Royal Armory. It's the French Royal Institute. It's supposed to just be their, um, their damage, I believe. But that has been changed. Gunpowder Tech now applies correctly to the French Gallius, which is nice. And also the Royal Cannon now receives the intended 20% bonus damage. So the French, I think... Balance and bug wise, they didn't really get a whole ton of tweaking. They are no longer the master of the seven seas when it comes to any island map, which I think is a good balance. But I think that all these changes to spearmen, to horsemen, and to crosswomen are going to put the French in a really interesting position. Yes, their uh, unique crosswomen just got stronger. But the thing that makes the French so devastating is their cav. And the ability to counter that cav just became so much more potent as not just the, remember, not just the raw damage that can be output from the spearmen, but that auto bracing. That is going to be so devastating for the French. So we'll see how that kind of plays out, but I think that they definitely kind of got hit pretty hard here. The uh, Holy Roman Empire buildings constructed within the influence area of the Palace of Swabia now uh, use the emergency repair ability. And garrison weapons have been added to the Palace of Swabia, which is nice here. You know, this probably should have done this. The Elsbach Palace now properly uh, or correctly receives a 33% damage reduction. The ranged armor of Holy Roman Empire keeps has been reduced to match other sieves. I didn't realize that that was higher, but it is now brought in line. The two-handed weapons tech will no longer give men at arm units plus 15 health. I thought that that was intended. It is no longer there, of course. Depositing more than five relics into Holy Roman Empire docks will no longer increase naval attack speed past 25%. It already says in the tool tip that it limits it to 25%, so it's nice to see that that's just kind of been brought in line. Emplacements now have discounted gold cost, which is very nice for them. And then the bonus damage provided by the heavy mace and two-headed weapons tech now stacks correctly. So quite nice there. Um, overall, HRE, I think... They kind of, I think that this is such a really, I think that's a big bonus 
it, it wasn't stacking properly before. Um, and I think that that is really huge. They do lose out on the 15%, the 15 health here, which is unfortunate, but the men at arms is kind of like one of the big staying powers of the Holy Roman Empire. And they did get that nerf to their um, emergency repair, but I think overall their damage ability here is going to be pretty good. So I think HRE at least went even if not a little bit of a bump in this patch here, not too bad of a nerf in my opinion. Mongols, superior mobility will no longer apply the 50% move speed bonus twice. Improved wheelbarrow can now be researched in the Dark Age. The production cost of double trader has been corrected. The Cognate Palace no longer spawns early Lancers, which is good because it made the Cognate Palace kind of a pain in the ass. Um, Mongols are interesting because I think that all of the abilities to counter Cav is really going to come to haunt them, but at the same time, okay, they've got horsemen, they've got lancers, they've got uh, the Mongudai, they, they've got so many different types of uh, horse units that it's going to be interesting to see how the Mongols really shake out from this one. Um, I don't really have a strong enough opinion of how this really affects them because I just don't play the Mongols enough to know properly. So if you have an opinion of how this patch um, affects them, please, by all means, let it be known in the comment section below. I'm just going to put Cyan here because uh, I don't want to comment. Now for the Rus... Here's an interesting thing that is not in this. Right now for the Rus or prior to this, a common tactic was to take your scout, go and kill deer, right? In the beginning portions. Now, what you would do typically is called scooting and shooting. You would attack the deer, then click the, the scout would shoot and you click right next to the deer and then uh, shoot and then attack it again. This would cause your scout to shoot, move, shoot, move, shoot, move. It would animation cancel. That has been fixed. You can no longer scoot and shoot. The animation canceling is out for the Roos scouts. Well, for scouts in general. So if you were relying on that, it's no longer there. So just keep that in mind. But the Roos scouts hunting weapons now benefit from professional scout bonus by 200%. Professional scout tech now provides 2% damage to Roos scouts. I mean, that's cool. But by the time you research it, all those deer are already dead. So... It's kind of one of those things that's it's great to hear about, and maybe it makes it so that you can kill boars a little bit easier. But I think overall, it's kind of a wasted, um, a wasted benefit. I just think that maybe their scouts should just do more damage natively. Lodia transport ships and fishing ships conversions no longer have the H2 requirement, which is nice. Night torch damage scaling has been adjusted, and I don't know in which direction. Um, I have to assume it's down. Elite men at arms now have the correct attack speed, which is nice. Overall, though, I think that the Rus are going to get a little bit of a nerf here because of, again, the same reasons for the French. Uh, in fact, the Rus don't even have unique crossbowmen. And that handgunner debuff is probably going to hurt the Rus. I haven't gotten a chance to jump in to see how much it helps the or how much it really affects the Streltsy. But just to know that you can counter the Rus early night play very easily with just base spearmen so much more effectively is going to make the Rus kind of scale down a little bit. I don't think the Rus are dropping to D tier like the Delhi Sultanate, but I do think that the Rus are going to kind of be brought in line a little bit with these tweaks to the crossbowmen and to those uh, spearmen. But that kind of concludes here, guys, everything for our balance and bug fixes of this Age of Empires patch. I know this was a pretty dense video. I try to move through it as quick as possible to touch on everything and at least give you guys my opinion on stuff. But go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. Do you feel that my idea of, hey, these guys actually got nerfed, these guys got buffed was wrong? Do you feel like, hey, you know, that really didn't get buffed as well as you think it is? Whatever it is, let it be known in the comment section below. I'm all about you guys keeping me honest about stuff like this, but I also want it to be known about any kind of information that I might have missed, so on and so forth. But another big thing too is I hope that we get a pretty big or pretty fast hot fix to fix some of the pretty huge glaring bugs that came out. Um, what people have divulged from the Reddit is that this actual update is like 20 days old. It was decided upon like November 10th and it got through a lot of internal testing and then it was released to us. So I think what needs to happen here is probably a a very limited public beta of their updates to just find any of these quick little these quick little uh, uh, bugs, hit them in the face up front, or just kind of give immediate feedback to the dev saying like, yeah, great that you did a lot of these other things, like, but that horseman debuff was rough, or the Delhi Sultanate one was probably not a, a, a nerf that was absolutely needed, you know? So I think that overall, 
a lot of these balance and bug fixes are really nice, but I do think that some of them are a little too intense. The biggest things being the Delhi Sultanate Sanctity and the Horseman Health re health Buff, Health Debuff. Those two things, I think, are the things that really kind of kind of mix things up in a pretty big way. So we'll see how the meta shifts here. I'm going to be streaming hopefully tomorrow some battles of Age of Empires 4. I, I just hope there is some sort of hot fix that fixes the Abbasid issue up front so that I don't have to run into that. But if you are looking to jump in and watch some battles, you can find those on the channel. We'll be streaming it tomorrow around 10.30 a.m. Pacific Daytime or Pacific Standard Time because we, uh, we hit Daylight Savings. But I'll be doing that as like kind of a fun little birthday stream. My birthday is December 1st. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. If you uh, have any ideas or comments about the patch, let it be known below. But have a good one and take care.